Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us this afternoon and welcome to the prize giving award ceremony for the BDO UJ Thought Leadership Program. Um, I can see we have a lot of people joining us and uh, we're excited to have you and host you this afternoon as we celebrate some great minds, some great thoughts that come out of students who are studying as their first years at the University of Johannesburg. I'm just gonna give a second for us to get going. I can see our numbers are increasing and then we can get right into it in the next 30 seconds. Thank you so much. I hope everybody is excited and has been anticipating this day. It's taken a while for us to get to this point um, given the lockdown and COVID and all the other restrictions, but I am glad that we finally got into the day where we can recognize the students who have done a great job in um, putting together some good articles, some good essays and uh, good research done on the assignments that uh, were put forward by all the students who were in first year last year. And today, finally, we look at who is going to make it into the top three, who is going to ultimately be winning the prize for this year. Okay, I think our 30 seconds are up and I am going to officially start. My name is Hazel Bafu. I am a director at BDO South Africa and I'm the training officer for our psych trainees. So basically my job every day um, is to make sure that we take care of the trainees and give them the best possible experience that they can receive from BDO. So this uh, afternoon, we are going to be listening to the top four of our finalists that made it to um, get to this point with their projects. Ultimately, I believe that every project that was put together was a great initiative, was a great attempt, and definitely scored you some marks in your last year's year mark. And uh, in as much as everybody has done great, we need to look at who's made it to the top of the top. BDO has had an opportunity to review 10 of the best uh, assignments that got the highest marks and narrow it down from there to give an opportunity to the top students to present, which they have done so far. And today we'll be listening to a video recording of uh, their presentations, finalizing adjudication and going through the process of seeing who is going to make it to take the number one spot the number two spot and the number three spot. So before we go into the detail and the welcome of this program, I'm just going to take us through a few um, house rules. So because this is a webinar, um, we have a Q&A function. So if you'd like to ask any questions to us as video, if you want to find out where can you apply, if you want to join video and any kind of question, we've got a team of people who will be able to answer your questions please do not put them in the chat, rather put your questions in the Q&A box and we'll be able to get a response to you. And then secondly, please note that this session is going to be recorded and it is going to be made available via our video YouTube page, which will also share the link through the School of Accounting at UJ so that you can get to watch this later if you miss it or just want to relive the moment. So without wasting any further time, I'd like to welcome our CEO, Mark Stewart, who is the CEO of BDO, who is going to do an official welcome note of this event. I'll hand over to Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Hazel, and good afternoon, everybody. It's um, really great to, to be with you. Um, I've been involved in this program um, a couple of times before, and I must say it's always something that I, I look forward to. This project's been on the go for almost 10 years now, and it's one that we're really proud of to participate in. Our relationship with UJ is something that we treasure. And uh, when I was preparing for this, I, I just had a, a look at the UJ website and um, had a look at the purpose and vision of the university. And it really is very closely aligned to that of, of BDO as being transformation, innovation, collaboration. And that really is how we work in our organization and what we focus on. So interesting that 
we are so closely aligned. Of course, this afternoon, I look forward to seeing, hearing the submissions. Uh, previously, the quality has been exceptionally high, and uh, I'm, I'm always amazed at the work that is produced by our students. BDO's number of listed clients has grown over the recent years, and it's interesting to see uh, the analysis that the students come up with of those companies. And really interesting this year, of course, is that um, we've got, we had five submissions, none of which were a repeat of previous years. So nice to see that people are broadening um, the, uh, the view of our clients. What's obviously a first for this year's project is the impact of COVID. One can't address any um, group of people these days without talking about COVID. Um, at BDO, of course, our focus was fairly simple. Firstly, we were focusing on keeping all of our staff employed, not having to, to cut back on staff numbers. We needed to make sure that from a financial point of view, we maintained salaries that nobody had a, a salary cut. And then importantly, we needed to take care of the wellness of all our people. And I, I'm really proud of the way that BDA was able to um, achieve all three of those areas within COVID. But as students, I guess the impact on you has been profound in that many of you would not have even gone onto campus. Uh, you would have had to adopt new ways of studying um, and you wouldn't have had the benefit necessarily of working in groups, which is really where a lot of our learning comes from. Great, thank you so much for that, Mark. Hazel, sorry, I just had an interruption in the uh, video link, so if I can carry on, please. Yes, so thank you, please do. With regard to um, the official awards function, hopefully we look forward to seeing you in a couple of months time in person. Um, also, interestingly, BDO has launched a new project with UJ, and that's the um, 4IR project for the third years. And of course, those of you who are in second year this year, hopefully will be in third year next year, and we can see you once again. Um, and then just finally, I'd like to acknowledge the role that the staff play in this project. You know, it's, it's really great that uh, the staff are challenging students with new ways of thinking, new ways of learning. Um, and our thanks go to the staff who've been in, involved in this, this project, because without the support of the staff, um, we certainly wouldn't be able to achieve the success and the continuity of this project. So thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Mark, for that. We appreciate it. And I'm sure the students appreciate, you know, having an address from you. So next up, we are going to have um, a UJ representative, Dr. Simone Halin, is going to speak to us and as a representative of the university. Thank you, Dr. Simone. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Simone Aline. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Accountancy at UJ. From my side, also welcome to the awards function for the 2020 BDO Thought Leadership Project. As mentioned, this is the ninth year that we are partnering with BDO on this project. Thank you to BDO for hosting this virtual event. The project centered around critically evaluating the business strategy of BDO clients from various industries in terms of their response to the COVID-19 pandemic. This was, challenging and ex and a, this was a challenging and exciting opportunity for our students to respond and provide solutions to the current social economic environment. I would like to congratulate our four finalists on making it this far. To finish in the top four out of a class of 400 is a tremendous achievement. Good luck. We look forward to your insights today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Simone. We appreciate it. And I think it's been quite exciting even for you as the lecturers. This year, you got to mark different assignments. And I think as BDO, we are very proud because um, I've been involved in this project over a number of years and have seen how the students come up and pull up all sorts of clients, different listed clients, make it to the top 10 every year, where this year we are seeing in the top four 
finds that we haven't seen probably ever before in the past eight years. And we are excited to you know, be listening to what the students had to put together and how they will go through this process. Thank you so much, Simone. All right, so now we get to move right into the crux of the business of today. Um, we have a panel that has had the opportunity to review the assignments that were put together by the students, as well as watch the videos that they put forward and uh, had an opportunity to adjudicate today. We will take this opportunity to re-watch the videos together with everybody in attendance. And then each of the panelists will have an opportunity to ask a couple of questions to the candidates on the spot, find out you know, how good they are with not plagiarizing and how much understanding they had on the assignment that they did, considering they did so well to get to this point. So we will start off this afternoon with Sharice van Skalfeik, who has gone and done Huxton Publishers as an assignment that she chose, and she's put together a brilliant video that we are now going to watch and listen to what she had to say about her research on this entity. Thank you. Good day, my name is Shreesan Skalpik, and I'm currently a second year BX student at the University of Johannesburg. Today, I'll be walking you through my UJBDL Thought Leadership Project, which I completed last year. When given the task, I chose to do mine on Caxton and CTP publishers and printers. I chose this company as I know someone who worked there and experienced the impacts of COVID-19 on the business firsthand. I believe that their insights and knowledge on the business could therefore help me better understand Caxton as a business organization. This presentation will consist of three key points of discussion with the first being strategic objectives of the company. These are improvements to workplace safety, expansion of customer base, and improved management of technology to better business efficiency. Caxton is very big on health and safety and always ensures that standards and regulations of health and safety are adhered to as stipulated in both policy and legislation. Over recent years, it's been seen that Caxton has branched off into different sectors and is no longer confined to just the print media sector. Caxton aims to expand the customer base by providing a wide range of products and services. Caxton should continue to invest in the latest technologies as this will enable them to improve productivity and profitability. They will thrive in the industry if they continue to keep up with technology as they do right now. The next point of discussion is areas of focus for future business endeavors. These include advances in technology, customer satisfaction, and sound management of business finances. I believe that we live in a very fast-paced world that's constantly changing. For this reason, I feel that Caxton needs to utilize technology in the best possible manner to stay ahead of its competitors. Customer needs and wants are constantly changing. Thus, it is vital for the business to keep up with these changing wants and needs, as this will enable them to provide the right goods at the right time in the right place. The business needs to keep in mind that happy customers always come back. For any business, proper management of finances is important. It plays a very important role in the running of a successful business. It also increases a business's value. The final point of discussion relates to the adapting of strategy to COVID-19. This includes finding solutions to problems that have come about, adapting strategy post COVID-19 and the continued adaptation of strategies when the virus eventually calms down. For solutions to be found, I believe that the board of directors need to have a sit down and thoroughly discuss the situation in which the business finds itself, ideas, and solutions to the problems that the business has encountered can be found in this way. To move forward, the company must conduct rapid recovery planning and closely monitor the situation at all times. 
they should also look into conducting crisis management planning for future references if ever such an occurrence appears once more. Caxton has dramatically changed since COVID-19 struck and they will continue to adapt their strategy to rebuild the operations until they're in the position they once were in. We have reached the end, but before I go, I would just like to share what I learned whilst completing this task. I think the main thing that I learned was how dynamic and unpredictable the business environment can be because of how dynamic and unpredictable the environment is. I believe that businesses have to stay flexible and on their toes at all times. This way they can change and adapt accordingly as changes in the general environment occur. I also learned that the only way a business can ensure a long lasting success is by proper planning. Thank you so much for listening and thank you for affording me with this opportunity. Awesome, thank you so much, Sherits. Um, we will call upon Sherits nice. at this point, together with Shepard Mark, who is the manager, the senior manager on the Caxton audit. Over to you, Shepard, and uh, you can be able to unmute yourself and ask Sherice a couple of questions with regards to the Caxton presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Hazel. Thanks, Sherry's, for a wonderful presentation and a case study. Um, I just have uh, two questions that I need to ask. Um, I believe they're not quite difficult. Um, so last year, we saw Caxton shut down their ma uh, magazine division that was responsible for printing and publishing uh, several magazine titles. The shutdown was uh, because of sustained drop in circulation numbers over the years, i.e. people are not buying magazines. Um, and some people might argue that this is the beginning of an end in printing publication business. Uh, and that is, there's no future in printing business, especially in the face of technological developments. What are your thoughts around that? Okay, well, somewhere in my case study, I actually discussed this. I don't think that print media will come to an end exactly. There are still people who enjoy a hard copy of a magazine, of a newspaper, although technology is taking over. I think there's still hope for print, the print media industry to continue. Okay. But not, it won't be as big as it once was. Okay, all right, that's good. Um, and the next question, uh, it's around COVID-19. And I think uh, <clears throat> when we look at the impact of COVID-19 in general, we tend to look at mostly the negative effects of it, um, not necessarily the positive effects. And I think it's because uh, the negative effects are possibly more than the positive effects. But I just want to ask if there were any positive effects that you noted, especially for the printing industry when you were doing your research. I think the only positive was COVID-19 pushing the business into a more technological environment. So they've been able to focus more on the digital media sector. And I think that's going to be great for them in the long run because of mm -hmm. how fast paced the world is and everything. Okay, all right, that's quite good. Um, thanks, yes, I don't have uh, any more questions. Thank you so much for that, Shepard, and thank you for the responses that you've given us. We are just going to move forward into our next presentation, which was done by Votel and Tour, which is on Conduit Capital Limited. Uh, we will listen to Votel's video now. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking to you is Votel and Tour, a second year Bachelor of Accounting student at the University of Johannesburg. I chose Conduit Capital Limited, which is an insurance and investment company because I have always been intrigued by the insurance industry. I have always wondered why and how insurers would take on the risk to reimburse individuals and businesses for the loss or damage of their possessions. 
I knew that by doing research on Pinduoduo Capital Limited, I would find answers to questions I have always had but never took the initiative to find. Pinduoduo Capital Limited is a JSE holding company with its main subsidiary being Constantia. The following presentation will look at how Pinduoduo Capital Limited reached its strategic objectives, their areas of excellent performance, areas for improvement, COVID-19 responses, and then we will conclude. Conduit Capital Limited has five main objectives, which are return on capital employed, growth in intrinsic value, investment returns, combined ratio, and growth in investable assets. Of the five objectives, only combined ratio was met, and this is the, the ratio that tracks the progress on, of the daily operations. Although short-term targets are not met, the company focuses on a long-term strategy and are hoping that short-term losses will eventually lead to long-term gains. It is noteworthy that Conduit Capital Limited promotes a culture of high quality performance. This is evident in the fact that their financial performance improved despite the presence of the COVID-19 pandemic. They also complied with legislation and the new requirements that the JSE had adopted during the COVID-19 pandemic. The other improvements that they had made is that they had appointed a new CEO, Mr. Peter Todd at Constantia, under whose leadership the financial ratios improved. They also appointed a new underwriting manager whose appointment led to underwriting profits as opposed to underwriting losses in the previous financial year. They also took the following correctives, corrective measures that had worked. Books with poor performances were revisited, either for rigorous improvement or for cancellation. A layer of risk was shared by disposing of impaired investments. The losses per share were also reduced to 84,79 compared to the 92,86 in the previous financial year. However, there are the following areas for improvements. Financial matters are dealt with retroactively and not proactively. This narrative is supported by Mr. Riskovitz's statement, who is the CEO, that some losses were unnecessary. This shows that a more proactive response needs to be taken. Even when strategies are implemented to correct unexpected expenditure, these do not yield the, the desired results. Therefore, tolerance for mistakes should be reduced to ensure effective results. Although the company focuses on the long term, there still has to be a sign of short-term gains that will eventually lead to the long-term objectives. Following more, the company can, should reinforce existing policies that they already have, such as ensuring that their criteria for investments is enforced strictly. They should assist their subsidiaries and investments to avoid impairment as the success of the subsidiaries and investments is, is if eventually the success of the holding company. This is possible since Finbon's share, price per share, has increased from 12 cents to 2 rent 45 cents per share. They should also ensure that the underwriting management agencies stay within the risk appetite that the company has set for itself. Fortunately for Conduit Capital Limited, they had a business continuity in a continuity plan in place when, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Conduit Capital was able to offer premium relief to their customers who qualified, and this was balanced by the reduced claims as most people were at home. They should also consider waiving waiting periods to ensure ease of claims for their customers. This was a strategy that was used by one of their competitors, Clientel Limited. They should also make efficient use of technology systems that they do have, such as the Joshua Insurance Technology and Rika Tech Telematics Technology to boost their profits. Furthermore, Conduit Capital Limited has specialized knowledge on small to medium-sized enterprises. They should capitalize on this advantage to increase their market share. They should also take note of the fact that a new market has been created. More people are aware of the need for pandemic contingency insurance policies. Hence, if they supply these and make customers aware of these, they could also improve their market share. In conclusion, although the company is not meeting its short-term 
objectives. They are optimistic that they will meet the long-term objectives. However, as stated before, they should be proof in the short term that long-term objectives will be met. It is also suggested that they tighten control over their expenses, support investments and subsidiaries to avoid impairments, capitalize on competitive areas to survive the COVID-19 pandemic, and also capitalize on the fact that a new market has been created. Overall, the company has performed exceptionally well during the last six months that ended um, 31 December 2019, as well as during the 2020 financial year. Ladies and gentlemen, my time is up and I thank you for yours. Thank you for that, Boitelo. Very comprehensive write up on Conjit Capital. So we're going to call upon Boitelo to switch on her camera and come on together with uh, Adam Walden, who is the director on the Conjit Capital Audit. Over to you, Adam and Boitelo. Thanks, Hazel. Hi, Botella. Thank you for your presentation and thank you for your project. Um, yeah, I thought it was well, well thought out and well put together. Um, so just two questions from my side. The first one, similar to Shepard's question earlier, what do you think are some of the direct benefits an insurance company like Constantia could have received under COVID? And, and why, why do their results under COVID, uh, why, why could they look better? Good afternoon, Adam, and thank you for the questions. First of all, with the COVID-19 pandemic, it has come, uh, many people have realized, or many businesses rather, have realized that they need to have business continuity plans um, in place. So this is an opportunity for the insurance company, because now more people are aware that they actually need this this, this, this insurance, this policy, this insurance cover. At first, they didn't, no one expected the COVID-19 pandemic, but fortunately, or rather unfortunately, but fortunately for the business, now more people are aware of this kind of cover and hopefully more businesses will be taking it out and making use of such policy covers. And then the second question, why it is that the, that the profits could look better. I believe it's because since people were working from home most of the time, they did not, they weren't, they were, the accidents, the accidents on the roads reduced, that's one. So they did not have to spend as much on insurance payouts as they usually did over the previous years. Instead, they saved on that. And the money that they saved from insurance payouts, they could actually use to reduce some of the premiums for some of the customers. I think that is why they could they had increased profits during the COVID-19 time. Thank you. And then maybe just to add on to that, um, in your view, how do you think COVID-19 could have an impact on the insurance industry going forward? And what changes do you think we could see maybe coming through in the next couple of years? I think COVID-19 has um, a technological impact on most industries. So for example, to reduce Personal, personal contact, most insurance companies have had to make sure that their online self-service claims work perfectly well. So that is an area that most insurance companies are going to expand into. So that, and that also reduces the work on their side, the, the admin work for claims and so on, if customers can do it, can process claims from home on their own. Uh, the second part of the question, Please. Uh, that, 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 that's it, you answered it fine, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Adam. Hazel, back to you. Adam and Boitello for that. Now we're going to move on to our next presentation, which is on Ellis, and the presentation is by Elisma. There is some rhyming happening with that choice that she made and um, we will look at her presentation, which is coming up next. Welcome to all the members of the Board of Directors of BDO. I am Elasma Sardari Warte, a second year Bachelors of Accounting student studying at the University of Johannesburg. Elite Holdings Limited is the company that I chose to analyze. Elias Holdings is a company that trades and manufactures products and services relating to electronics, such as satellite television products and accessories, solar power, LED lighting solutions, and sound and audio visual equipment. 
it is evident that they operate in the electronics industry. I chose Ellis Holdings because the nature of their business intrigued me. Their products and services play a very important role in today's world, where everyone has become dependent on electronics. They provide businesses and individuals with the necessary tools to complete their daily tasks effectively. How well has the company met its strategic objectives? Firstly, looking at the operational efficiency strategy, the company continued with the operations despite the difficulty of 2020. Today's world, where everyone has become dependent on electronics. They provide businesses and individuals with the necessary tools to complete their daily tasks effectively. How well has the company met its strategic objectives? Firstly, looking at the operational efficiency strategy, the company continued with the operations despite the difficulty of 2020. The ability to continue as a going concern has been at risk, but they are working on a solar turnaround strategy. The main warehouse in Johannesburg has infra infrastructure issues which negatively affected their operational efficiency, but this issue is being addressed by management. They have also undergone restructuring and their workforce has been reduced. However, they are striving to treat employees with fairness, keep communication open, look after employees' interests, and invest in employee training and skills development. Secondly, with regards to their cost management strategy, the company's costs increased rapidly during 2020 as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, lockdown, various impairments, write-offs, and restructuring. However, they are aiming to create synergy across divisions and support businesses, customers, and profit generation in order to reduce costs. They have also excelled in preventing corruption and fraud costs, as they did not make any donations to political parties, and no fines were issued for non-compliance with laws or regulations. Thirdly, with regards to their profitable growth strategy, the company's profit has decreased as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and increased costs. However, they are planning to grasp innovative diversified opportunities in order to ensure profitable growth for the next financial year, and they are working on solutions which will take them into the home solar market. They are also devoted to find solutions for ESCOM's power cuts. Lastly, looking at their compliance risk and governance strategy, the land occupied by the company is in main metropolitan areas meaning their operations does not affect protected areas and their operations does not have a significant effect on their environment. They value human rights and no incident of human rights abuses or discrimination has been reported. They also comply with employment, labour, skills development, health and safety and equity legislation through the implementation of policies and ensuring that employees are aware thereof. The company's operational efficiencies objectives were partly well met but need some improvement. The cost management objectives were relatively well met but needs extensive improvement. The profitable growth objectives have not yet been met but is well underway and their compliance risk and governance objectives were exceptionally well met. The company should focus on the following areas for the future. With regards to their finance, they must decrease their costs to improve their cash flows and efficiency. In order to decrease costs, they must implement cost management controls. Obtaining funding will improve their cash flows and expansion. In order to obtain funding from banks, the company must decrease their debt. With regards to their profitable growth, they must offer new products which will allow them to grow and increase profits. They must innovate in order to design new products. They must also obtain competitive advantage over their rivals to increase their market share, revenue and profit. In order to gain competitive advantage, they must differentiate themselves from their rivals. With regards to their operational efficiencies, they must improve their warehousing facilities, which will allow them to support future volumes. They must train and upskill staff to improve the staff's efficiency and productiveness. They must also make use of technology and digitalization, which will allow them to operate faster, easier and more efficiently. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the company must adjust their strategy in the following ways. The health and safety of staff must be prioritized by implementing the following compulsory wearing of masks, daily health checks, social distancing, ventilation, telecommuting, and making use of PPE. It is important that they reduce costs as they incurred many losses. They can do so by applying for tax relief and debt relief, taking out loans and implementing remote working. The company must focus on growth and profit to expand and make up for losses by delving deep into data, using creative marketing strategies, and diversifying their services and products. 
They must also implement new policies and plans, and they must strengthen certain functions as a result of new circumstances, such as health and safety policies, and they must strengthen their internal audit function and construct a business continuity plan. In conclusion, Elias Holdings did not allow the year of 2020 to get the best of them, and they have the potential to build a bright future. Thank you to all the members of the Board of Directors for taking the time to listen to my presentation. Thank you so much for that, Elisma. Um, at this point, we will call upon Elisma to switch on her video together with Priyanka Gavinder, who is the Senior Manager for the Ellis Holdings Audit, and she will ask her a couple of questions. Over to you, um, Pri. Thank you, Hazel, and hello, everybody. Um, Elisma, I just have two questions for you. So, um, at the beginning of your presentation, you mentioned that you chose Ellie's because you are intrigued by the company. So I just wanted to know if there's anything that you learned um, whilst doing this project that you weren't really aware of or something that kind of came to your attention that interested you a little bit more. Hello. Um, so I think that uh, the company plays a very important role in today's world, especially in the COVID-19 pandemic as the world has moved, has become more dependent on electronics. And I've also learned that um, Elise is also um, involved in fiber connections and that has also become very important. And I have just learned how important electronics is and how dependent we are on it, especially in today's world. Thank you. Um, and then my next question just goes to something you touched on towards the end of your presentation. Um, and it was on um, the ways in which they can um, grow their profitability through differentiation of services and products. So given COVID and, and what's going on in the market and the economy and, and how that's, that's become a little bit more difficult um, if you don't have the right direction, what do you think um, they could do to, to get that differentiation? examples of it okay so i know they are currently selling um electronic equipment uh, television equipment fiber and so on so i think that they can improve their advertising and advertise in different manners which will differentiate them from other companies and um they're also in the solar industry so that is also differentiating them from other normal electronic companies and this differentiation allows them to, um, to help individuals and companies who are struggling with ESCOM's power outages and so on. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for that response, Elisna, and thank you, Pri. Um, we will now move on to the fourth video that we're going to watch, which is by Paul Sefara, and this is on the exemplar audit, and this is not um, the, it's the last one, but not the least of them at all, and nothing like the bottom. We'll listen to Paul's video now. Thank you. Delightful greetings. My name is Paul Sefara. An introduction of my chosen company it was on the 17th of January, 2018, that Exemplar Retail, which was formerly known as McCormick Retail Farm Limited, was incorporated into becoming a public company with a financial year ending in February. Exemplar holds 20 income generating property portfolio, include, including three additional shopping center development properties, which have been completed around April to October, 2019. The business owns maintains and also develops a property portfolio of South Africa shopping centers that are centered in several parts of regions, such as in South Africa's poorly serviced peri-urban neighborhoods and rural regions. The selection of exemplar from other companies was based on a specific criterion. One was being familiar with the industry over being familiar with the company itself. The criterion also includes having family members who work in the real estate industry and the desire and interest to also work in the same industry myself. Moreover, the information about the company was easily accessible from its website 
and other relevant sites. So in this presentation, we are going to discuss my main research findings on how well the company met its strategic objectives, look into areas where the company should focus for the future, and also zoom into the how uh, the company's strategy should be uh, adjusted to address the COVID-19 pandemic. And lastly, will be the conclusion. Firstly, let us assess how well the company has met its strategic objectives. Example catered for a greater proportion of basic products and supplies in its shopping centers, as they usually provide more necessities than luxuries, and as such are comparatively isolated from recessionary conditions. Furthermore, although there was no growth in South Africa's GDP during that financial period, the financial projections surpassed the estimates that were made in the 2018 prospectus. Moving to the next slide. Against the depressed economic landscape of that year, the business recorded a 27% more than the targeted total profit. This suggests that indeed the strategic objectives of Exemplar were efficiently attained. We also see that they managed to acquire two shopping centers along with phase one of, of the reconstruction of Chris Heine Crossing, which is one of the best performing properties of the portfolio. They achieved 85% more than A-rated tenants and also reported a growth of 1.8% in net asset value per share. But we also see that Exemplar failed to attain the property portfolio objective by negative 11%. There was also a shortfall in rental income and recoveries of 32.5 million rents. Moreover, they failed to consistently monitor and adjust tin and mix profiles in all malls because with Edcon entering into voluntarily business rescue, they subsequently were unable to pay their landlords. So this affected 2.8% of property revenue. Now, we will give feedback on areas where the company should focus for the future. Exemplar should focus on strategically placed properties so that they can build competitive barriers. They should have a dilutive procurement approach with an insistence on the short-term rental stability along with long-term opportunities which are beneficial for their growth. They should focus on completing the solar PV installation and the installation of AC system across their portfolio because this will reduce the high expenditure that they face on electricity bills. By strengthening and social engagement through social and humanitarian programs, Exemplar will be able to better the communication with the communities that the properties are based. The company should revamp these contracts to provide automatic extension at the end of the leases, especially with the retailers' impending renewals and the anticipation of lower raises on renewals. Finally, they need to accumulate developments that have been underscored in the first phase, enabling their maximum capacity for redevelopment and growth to enable future proofing of each asset. Moving along, this is a list of how the company's strategy should be adjusted to address the COVID-19 pandemic. Zooming in on those, Exemplar needs to improve the management of operating expense. This is because COVID-19 is likely to create additional expenditure for the company. So the company should strictly adhere to such operating costs, therefore adjusting the strategy. Exemplar must raise the major and activity of acquisition. Weaker property portfolio significantly struggle as a result of the pandemic. Therefore, it creates a strategy a strategic opportunity, for example, to adjust its investment strategy by acquiring weaker portfolio and major acquisition and major activities. As a result of the liquidity and cash flow problems, when tenants do not pay their rental cost, Exemplar should create consideration for the cash and crisis management team to effectively strategize around the liquidity and cash flow problems. Lastly, to avoid a decrease in revenue caused by tenants, Exemplar should create a strategy around the framework on lease agreements to accommodate tenants impacted by the pandemic on their cash flow. In this presentation, we looked into the assessment of Exemplar strategic objectives, 
We also discuss where exemplars should focus for the future, as well as the strategy adjustments to address COVID-19. I hope I've earned the privilege of your time. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, at this point, I will call upon Paul to switch on his video, Delightful as greetings. well as Craig Page, who is uh, one of our managers, to come forward and ask um, Paul his questions. Thank you, Craig. Thanks, Hazel. How's it going, Paul? Um, first of all, I think a uh, good job on the presentation. I liked it a lot. Um, I think just keeping with the theme of today, I'm just going to go with a couple of questions. Um, firstly, I just wanted to uh, get your opinion on this, but um, what do you think the future of uh, Exemplar is, given the increase uh, in on online shopping, and specifically taking into account um, the increase in popularity of online shopping as a result of the pandemic? Okay. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, I must say that uh, with the increase of, of online shopping, because with uh, the tenants of, of Exemplar being uh, one of these uh, shopping, shopping centers and mostly providing uh, not necessities rather than luxuries, uh, so they'll be able to increase, so which means consumer spending will be able to increase, and then as such, uh, the tenants will be able to pay their rentals and therefore uh, uh, increasing the revenue of Exemplar as such. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot. Um, okay, just in terms of my second question, um, so I just want to know there sort of um, what your opinion is and um, what do you think some of the be benefits are investing in a rate instead of um, other companies listed on the JSD? Okay. Um, Investing in a REIT, I think because uh, with, especially with the COVID-19 arising now, we, we saw that uh, property value was decreasing. So which means that Exemplar as well as uh, other companies that want operate in the same industry will, will be able to be to finance these companies. And as such, uh, the, and we know that the real estate property value will, will increase over time and as such, the, the they will be able to 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 the capital growth in the long term will, will rise okay awesome well thanks a lot um i think that's everything on my side uh yeah it's all back to you awesome thank you so much craig and thanks for that paul so we are going to be moving swiftly at this point into our winning segment and uh, we have fortunately um, another category that we often give in this award ceremony whereby we give an award to the most improved student. And um, I think in the meantime, our panelists will be busy crossing the T's and dotting the I's. And I'm just going to call upon Anundu Mison Kleko, who is our senior people and culture manager, who is going to be taking care of our winner segment. Thank you, Anundu Misa. Thank you very much, Hazel. Um, winning the UJ Leadership Project Competition is definitely not easy, but it's also not easy for our panel as well. Um, looking at all the videos that have been submitted, all the assignments that they had to mark. And also, given the fact that in the first year of accountancy class, there's over five, 400 students, so there's so much competition. So well done to everyone that has participated. I'm thrilled to announce the winners this year. And um, firstly, I'm just going to talk about the top 10 students. So congratulations to making it to the top 10. We will be inviting uh, the top 10 students together with the runner up that will be invited or that will be announced today to the BDO offices to socialize with our managers and partners. And uh, because of BDO, we care for your safety be assured that BDO follows the COVID-19 safety regulations. Now for the most improved student. Now this is the student that the lecturers look at from the beginning of the year up until the end of the year, whether it is grasping concepts, writing, and actually producing 
you know, um, good assignments. And this student is Princess Nontlantla Ngosi. So if you can just give Nontlantla a round of applause. Okay, just in addition to the top 10, in addition to the top 10 that were chosen, I need to just um, take you through the companies that were in the top 10. We had Kexton Publishers with one assignment coming through, Ellis with, with three, eMedia with one, Conduit one, Exemplar had two, WBHO one, and Udeco one. So congratulations to all the top 10 and all the companies that made it to that section. Has the I can imagine the tension is probably building up there behind Nundumi. So with our uh, four candidates who have just had the opportunity to answer questions and are now waiting to hear what is the position that they're going to take and possibly what is it that they stand to win here in Nundumi. So are we talking money or are we, what are we talking about? What do we stand to win? Okay, so um, we are talking cash. We know that um, students have got a lot of needs that um, they, you know, they actually need to buy clothes and everything else, even just for entertainment. So when we look at the top three winners, we are looking at prices all the way from 3,500 and to our most improved um, at 1,000 rands. So as we go down the line, I will be telling you exactly how much they're going to win. And we're keeping the surprise for the top 10 that will actually be coming onto the premises on a date that is still to be confirmed. Thank you so much, Nundumiso. I think it's round about time for the drum roll to be rolling and for everybody to be listening out who we've got in at the top three. Uh, probably naturally it'll start off from who would take the third place in this case and move over building on that suspense to take us to who is going to be the ultimate uh, number one winner for the 2020 UJ and BDO Thought Leadership Program. And Hazel, the nice thing with um, this project is that there are so many role players that um, it makes it so easy to also have a lot of winners. I think the managers that have partaken in, um, you know, marking assignments and actually deliberating, they are my winners. Um, the, the partners and managers that have taken time to be here today and all the students that have also taken their time to be here. But as we wait for the UJ Thought Leadership Project winner, Stay tuned. And, and I'm also going to just ask the panelists if they can unmute themselves and help with the clapping that's happening in the attendees that we don't get to hear. So we can at least have a little celebration going on here as we get through to the announcements. Okay. And the students as well. You're welcome to unmute and uh, get ready to clap and cheer for yourself, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So I will start with our third place. And third place we have Nipo Sefara. Well done, Nipo. Thank you, thank you. Yes, Nisa, I'm here, and you can move forward to the second position. For the second place, we have Sheree Pascal. Hey, Well done. Thank you. And in first place, 
we have a list map sent to our tech. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Right. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Nandini. So any parting words? I'm just excited, uh, Hazel, for everyone that has um, you know, won today. There will be an email that will be going out letting them uh, know exactly what they are going to be winning and how they can claim their prize. Um, so please be on the lookout for that. And also on the lookout for an email that will be going out with regards to the top 10 um, invite. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Nundumiso, for that. And congratulations once again to the winners of the 2020 project that is a collaboration between BDO and the University of Johannesburg. We are so proud of you. And we are just proud that you made it this far and you have achieved something and show great potential for leadership and for exhibiting great thoughts. And we applaud you for that. Um, this actually brings us to the end of our program for the, for the day. And we would like to thank all of the students at the University of Johannesburg who took the time, dedicated themselves to working on this project during the course of last year. I can imagine it wasn't easy. You probably spent nights on end preparing, typing up, researching on the internet, having to Google a lot of stuff about these companies that you had to research on, which shows a high level of dedication and shows that you have potential to become great leaders. I know often enough every year when you're going through this project, there is a lot that goes on on the Twitter page for the accountancy at UJ, where people are talking about how it's quite a hectic assignment, but at the same time, get to enjoy it because you get to discover something from the other side of the world, you know, from the actual business world and what's happening out there, which is quite exciting. And one of the main reasons why we as BDO continue to embark on this project, which we look forward to continuously having even in the years to come. I would like to invite all the students who have joined us today that uh, please visit our BDO website, check out our Twitter, follow us, and you can also connect to us um, on our Facebook page, follow the video people on our, our LinkedIn, the official video LinkedIn page or any one of the panelists that you have engaged with uh, today, you are welcome to connect with us and link with us as we would love to continue, um, you know, having a good relationship with you. Uh, but ultimately, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who has attended, the attendees who have been here this afternoon from the University of Johannesburg. We thank you for the students who came out to support their fellow students, as well as a big thank you to our video colleagues. We have come here to witness yet another one of these great events, listen to the wonderful work that comes out from those who are going to be the future CAs that are upcoming and hopefully we look forward to having some of you, if not all of you, joining video, the bigger, better video in the next few years to come, where you can continue your journey with becoming a CA. I think um, it's quite um, a funny one that we are doing this virtually because I can think about in all the previous years, round about now, we will be looking to where the toasting of the drinks are and all the food that would have been put out there for us to celebrate this great occasion. But I'm hoping wherever the people are working from home in the office, we'll celebrate with a cappuccino, maybe a late lunch or something like that. And we're hoping that the world is gonna turn out better. And hopefully the next time we are meeting for this event, we can be able to celebrate in person and uh, enjoy it much more ceremoniously. Um, but just uh, saying that, I would like to thank you nonetheless for making the time and I wish you all uh, the, the rest of your day to be great and um, enjoy. Thank you so much for joining us.